As summer was winding down, reality began to hit that I was about to start my senior year of college. I had just gotten back from fishing in Montana for the first time, and I had been blown away by what the West had to offer. The landscape was completely different from what I was used to in North Carolina, and I couldn't wait to go back. Luckily, I had one more trip planned before summer was over, and it just so happened I would be heading west again, back to Montana. This time, we had a little road trip ahead of us, and our final destination was British Columbia. Well, we're at the uh, Canada border, about to go through Canadian customs. The goal was simple. We wanted to spend a week exploring a new area and chasing a fish that none of us had ever targeted. A native species to British Columbia, known for its aggressiveness, its size, and its predatory appetite. It had this chunk of a fish. I hadn't even finished digesting it, it's still sticking out of its mouth, and it still went after our flock. Bull trout were our main target for the trip. We also knew the area was known for its West Slope cutthroat fishing, which seemed like the best of both worlds. To say the least, we had quite the week ahead of us. We were excited to see new water and try to decipher the fishery in a couple of days. But before we get too far into the video, better introduce the crew. This is Steve. Some say he looks homeless. And he was, for some period of time. Welcome to the Discovery Channel. This is Hobo Steve. We don't really know how old he is, but we know he spent a good portion of his 20s living in his car out west. He's cleaned up now, and has traded life on the road fishing for a 9 to 5 desk job. A little happier. Needless to say, he needed this trip more than anyone. Are you my Uber? I called an Uber earlier. Adam? Then there's Adam. He's the brains of the operation, and responsible for making this entire trip happen. From planning out the logistics to fly supply, he had us covered. You gotta be careful not to cut your flash because if you've had enough Jack Daniels, you will absolutely cut your flash. He recently moved out west to be closer to trout fishing and spends every chance he can in his raft. I'm honestly surprised he hasn't installed a whiskey still in the back of it yet. Together, these two created Blue Line Co. to share their passion for fly fishing and adventure with the community. Their unique offering of patterns and gear were developed while chasing smallmouth in the southeast and bumming around out west, refining their streamer game for trout. They spend a ridiculous amount of time on the water and behind the vice, improving their flies and techniques so they can offer the most effective patterns on the water. Or at least that's the excuse they use to go fishing. Oh yeah, then there's me, doing my best to document all the shenanigans along the way and trying not to drop my camera in the water. Oh man. All right, enough of me talking, let's get into this. It's hard pressed to get me to leave my house without my supply tying stuff. So I bring I bring my tying gear with me on pretty much every fishing trip. You know, I mean, you gotta be able to sit down and tie what you need for the river. I mean, I didn't want to drive 12, 14, 20 hours from my house to not have every chance to catch the best fish that I could. Trim the head down a little bit to square it off. We're tying up a new pattern that I designed a little a, a little while ago. We really were fishing these the past few days. We we lost a few. Yeah, you lost one too. Dude. I lost one, we lost a few. So th these have really been working the past couple days. We're going to tie up a few more of these just make sure we've got enough to enough to to cover our needs for tomorrow. Hey guys, welcome to day two here in British Columbia. We're going after some bullies and cutties today. One of the issues that we always have is trying to get a shuttle. It's a logistical nightmare and it gets really costly. So what we did for this trip is we figured out an alternate solution. We got ourselves a motorcycle. Valley right here. So I mean, just look at that. We got this nice aquamarine blue water. 
beautiful backdrop right there. And we've been seeing some huge rises already coming out here. So if nothing else, we're gonna have some insane cutty fishing on top. But that real money's gonna be throwing that eight and 10 weight for some, some bullies. Certainly, you know, streamer fishing, I think when you're on a new river, trying new spots, I think having, at least seeing some action, having some fish interested in your fly, chase your fly, uh, flash at your fly, I think, you know, at least shows that you're on the right track. Uh, on a new river like this, I think it's worth every, you know, every few minutes trying something different until you really start start getting a reaction from the fish. We're, we're kind of pulling over every five, 10 minutes if we're not having action and trying a different fly and changing up more than just maybe the color. We're changing its whole profile as well. How does it swim in the water? Uh, how much water does it push? Things like that. Oh, she's a bully. It's a bully. You have a bully on, Scotty. Yeah. Keep on him. Give me a sec. Swing around, swing around. There we go. Steven's gonna put his snorkel mask on. Yeah, I'm about to dive in. Fine, can you swing him my way, Scotty? Try to get his head up. Woo! We're on the board with the bulls. We need to kind of keep keep working, keep playing with what kind of water they're sitting in. We've got one of our, our most popular patterns right now on, the Madison Sculpin. Uh, starting to get follows on it, starting to see fish, see interest, see chases. We're not quite there. We've had some smaller ones eat that just weren't quite big enough to, to really eat the streamer. We need to keep, keep kind of tinkering with it, but starting to dial it in. Hopefully we can uh, get a big fish to commit on. Fuck yeah! <laughs> That's what it was. Oh my god, that was funny. Dude, you god damn it. <laughs> Get him, what? Yeah! yeah. <laughs> no, literally he just threw it out there and just fat jerk, fat jerk like out of the same. And he just I just see him cruise up to it, and next thing I know, Boom. he just murders it. Dude, that was a sick eat. Man, so, drop this anchor here real quick. No, no, yeah, you uh, pulled up two white fish in a row. The first one that uh, you pulled up, that bully came up and just tried to crush it right in front of the boat. But that being said, we we're like, okay, what can we do that's a little bit more fanatic, a little bit crazier moving, and a little bit larger than what we've been throwing. Kind of what we were hoping to do originally and just wasn't working out today. Well, we switched over to that first cast out twist twitch just nice long pull with a good pause in between it was really going erratic big deer hair head on it and finally to the bottom of the swing i just see this bully just rising up on it gave it one little twitch and he was on and that rod just bent over and it was, it was a fight puts to shame most every other fish you'll catch on a streamer Ooh. here let me get out really quick There it is. It's a good cut. Hell yeah. Sweet. Nice little cutty. We'll keep you on the soft outside edge here. Kind of yeah. mosey on down. That work for you? Yeah. What are you running? A 25 butt, 16 front? Ah, oh, you eat it. Good one. It's about as big as yours. Little bully. I think I think we're on to it, dude. Help me, Tom Cruise. Help me with your Scientology. First bully. First bully I ever caught. It was not quite what I wanted. So that down, that downhill swing. 
That's where you got it too on the downhill swing for you. Yeah. All right, we're on something finally. I think I need another beer. I think we packed enough beer for two people. <laughs> we had three people on the boat. The downside of it. Well, it's been a it's been a good day so far. Had a bunch of boys, bunch of cutties, bunch of whiteies, and um, what happened there? It was like what about two one one thirty two o'clock, and it just shut down. We weren't getting anything on the nymphs, anything on the streamers, no chases. You know, so we're wondering if it was the temperature that was causing them to kind of shut down there. Um, another interesting thing that we uh, we've noticed with these bullies is that. They're not really sitting there where we're used to predatory fish sitting. A lot of times with browns and smallies, you see them sitting up, like over here underneath this log jam or in the soft water behind it, or even off these drop-offs here. But most of these bullies that we've been finding have been sitting in the deep water down around the tail out towards the end where there's a nice little soft line running along the heavy water. And that's, that's where we've been catching them all. So we've been having to kind of change up our game, change up the flies, change up our targets. Besides that, it's been very educational. We've learned a lot so far and uh, definitely looking forward to see how the rest of the week goes. Every one of us caught a bull trout. Every one of us has had a great day. So, well, except for me, because I'm about to get us stuck here. Yeah. Besides, besides that. I can't read a river. I was talking. <laughs> you can't multitask. No. You can't talk. You just, just, just drag it. Just drag it that way. So, downside of uh, manhandling the bike is that if you grip the wrong place, you get a little bloody. I kind of looked down and I uh, felt my thumb was kind of in pain. I looked down and just saw the skin hanging off and I was like, huh, that's not good. Uh-oh. Pretty good looking storm right there. There you go. Oh, that's good a good one. one. Okay, nice. Let's go. Oh! You drink a lot of beer, start cramping a lot. The mustard helps. A lot better than pickle juice. Adam. I haven't seen Captain now. Oh god. It literally just got nice about four seconds ago. Like just all of a sudden turned on here.